All right, what's going on guys? It's XTR. I'm going to keep this introduction very brief, but I just wanted to say, yes, I already made a sage guide and that is posted on the channel. So that'll be linked in the description. And I want to make a new video because I've played a lot more Valorant since then and mainly on sage. So I'm going to give some tips and tricks that I've learned through ranked and through climbing all the way to immortal and some shit that works at the high ranks and should work at the lower ranks as well. So we're going to get started with that, and I'm going to try my best to make this not a carbon copy of my last video. So let's get this shit started. So we're going to talk about Sage as a character, and she, by all means, is yes, she is a support character, but at the same time, she is also a carry character. You can easily carry with her, and what I mean by that is you are basically a walking, breathing fucking tank as Sage. Not only can you heal your teammates, but if you're stuck in like a one versus two situation, you have so much potential. Uh, you can easily use your wall to sh to shut down certain areas of the map that you won't have to worry about in certain scenarios. So it's very, very impactful. Say you're on A-Site Haven and you wall off CT, that shuts down a major area. And it, if they start breaking it, you know instantly that's where they're coming from. Now, given a lot of the times, you won't actually have your wall that late into the round. So you got to be careful about that. But... Her wall is extremely vital, her slows are very vital, even though they did receive a slight nerf. So Sage, yes, she is a support, but she has the potential to be a very good carry character that can frag very easily. You can use her wall to get you off angles, you can use her wall to shut down pushes and let your team rotate. There are so many ways you can play this character to absolutely dominate the game. So I'm going to teach you uh, a couple ways that I have found to actually play Sage properly, and a couple of the ways that Sage can be used at the higher and lower levels very, very effective. Now, first, we're going to start off with their wall. And what I notice a lot of players doing uh, at my rank, even with their wall is instantly the second the round starts, they just throw their wall down and that shit will just deteriorate so fast. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it lasts. I believe it lasts somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds without being shot, but it doesn't last very long. And when it wilts to the point where it's, there's so many fucking cracks in it and they can just bust that shit down like the Kool-Aid man, like... It's so pointless to just use your wall at the start of the round. That's what I'm trying to get at here. What you should be doing with Sage when you are playing in a certain area, say you're playing on... Say you're playing Split, and you are playing Sage. And a lot of the times, you're going to be playing mid with Sage on Split. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be playing mid with Sage. So, a lot of the times, I see a lot of players, just the second they get contact mid, they instantly throw off their wall. And that's the wrong way to do things. The best way I've noticed to actually do things is slowly expend your utility over time. If they're putting pressure towards mid, throw down some slows, throw down one slow that might get them to back off for a bit. They might release some pressure, you can maybe shoulder it out, take a couple peeks, get some info. If you know there's a lot there, you can slow it again, and if you know that they're trying to push through, that's when you use your wall. You don't want to use your wall in a situation that is completely and utterly pointless. You want to hold that wall. That wall is so impactful for every situation. It's so good for retakes. It's so good for just knocking out a certain angle that you won't have to look at. It's good for cover. It's such a good wall. And you don't want to use it selfishly. Like, I understand that a lot of the times players want to get a cheeky off angle with the wall. And yes, it can be useful for that. But there are always so many better, better fucking uses for that wall. On attacking, you can argue that it is a good use for the wall. And yes, it can be. Getting off angles with Sage Wall can be very good, but a lot of the times you want to actually think like, what more can I do in this round with this wall? Because there are always so many opportunities you can use it for. Another thing you need to take note of with the wall is you don't want to be walling your teammates off at certain chokes. If you are pushing up mid on split and say you don't exactly know where your team is actually planning on going, don't throw your wall down and basically force your team to go through a certain choke. Don't wall off ropes if you guys haven't decided on where you want to go that forces you to have to take heaven or fall back that cuts down on your options if you guys decide it might be smart to wall something off or just wall off your flank in general uh, a rule of thumb would be instead of walling off say ropes what you can do is you can wait until you get up into actual heaven and you can just wall off the entire flank that way you don't have to worry about people coming through say sewers in mid or from your spawn in general you can wall off your entire flank instead of using it on one angle maximize the usage of the wall maximize the angles you are cutting off and don't use them without knowing exactly where you guys want to go that puts you in a very bad position all right so we're here in game and i'm going to show uh 
example of what a proper mid hold would look like with Sage. So say I'm playing here, and I know that there are people coming up, all I have to do is slow this, and my teammate here can kind of shoulder it out. And even I, even I can shoulder it out a little bit. Just know that this can be risky, but this is a much better way to play it than just throwing your wall down instantly. And just wasting the wall, basically. Because they just baited out your wall. So your wall is gone for the round, and they have so many more options because they know your wall is gone. So, use your slows before your wall. That's a good rule of thumb. You want to get these slows out before you actually throw down the wall. Now, there are a lot of situations where you want to throw the wall down first. If you are getting rushed, it might be smart to throw the wall down right away. Uh, if you... Uh, if you think there's only a couple though, just use the slows, or even try and just take the gunfight. A lot of the times on these stairs, these stairs are really fucking buggy with the- It's gonna be hard to wall off certain angles when you're standing on fucking stairs like this. So be careful of that, that shit's annoying as fuck, and I've gotten cucked by it so many times when I'll try and wall this. It looks like they fixed it a little bit, just know it's really glitchy when you're trying to place it on walls. So be careful of that. And what I was saying earlier with don't wall off a certain choke, if y'all are just sitting here mid, just vibing, uh, and you haven't decided on where you want to go, say you haven't decided on heaven or ropes, don't wall off ropes, like, right away. You guys haven't decided on where you want to go yet. So that forces you to go through heaven, or just fall back in general. Don't wall this shit off right away. Now, with this wall, I want to say there are a lot of potential ways you can play rounds with it, and there are a lot of ways you can win rounds specifically with the wall. And this is known as the ABC wall, uh, where you basically just split the site in half, and I know probably all of you have seen this before, but you literally wall this off. The only thing they can peek is heaven, and then you guys, all you have to worry about is U-Haul. And then somebody comes up here and plants, and you basically all just fall back here and push into U-Haul and gain control that way. So there are a lot of different ways you can actually wall off like an entire half of sight. And this is what I was saying when I said maximize the use and maximize how many angles you are cutting off with the wall. Because shit like this is fucking so good dude it's so good uh i have won so many rounds using this specific wall and i know it's a very basic split for the site but there are different ones you can do i don't have any other examples i'm going to show off i'm just giving you the basic premise and it's basically just an example now another thing i wanted to talk about with this wall is uh there are different ways you can approach it other than using your slows to just stall them out because a lot of the times when you slow certain angles they just like to walk through it like if i slow this a lot of players will literally just walk through it. Uh, you know, it doesn't always happen, but it is something you have to worry about. So specifically on this map in this choke, I like to play for sound. And if I hear them walking up, I'll throw the wall down and I'll get like one rotator over here just in case. Usually it's a 3-2 setup, like 3 on A, 2 on B. But generally, if they're putting more pressure towards B, it's going to be a 3-2 from B to A. So a lot of the times, if I hear them, all I have to do is wall this off buy a little bit of time for my team to actually rotate over they can send one from b so that leaves two on b and three on a and if they put pressure here uh and they decide to fall back all that player has to do is rotate back it's it really is on this map a game of rotates so that's why i like to use the wall to delay almost instantly here on a map like but on a map like split where it's just it is constant rotates yes but there's so many more areas you have to actually be worried about on split that they can take you want to play a more delay focused like use your slows and then your wall that kind of way so this is kind of the last thing i wanted to go over with the wall so we're going to talk about our slows now it only costs 200 dollars to get both of her slows so it's a very good investment to actually have both of them every round you can afford them uh, her slows, I believe, only last 5 seconds now. They cut down on the time, so they're not as good, and it only reduces their speed a little bit now. I believe the actual amount is 30% reduction in speed, maybe 50%, as opposed to, I believe, the last one was 70%. And, uh, they have been glitchy lately, like, now, randomly, uh... Like, it'll slow them for a bit, but then randomly they can just start running through them. I don't know what the fuck happened with them. And sometimes, even when they're running through them, it doesn't make noise. So be aware, that's probably going to get patched... But be aware for now that people can run through them without making noise half of the times. So I don't know what the fuck is happening with the with the slow orbs, but they, they broke them somehow. Now, these slows are good on retakes, and they are good on taking sights. Uh, you have to be careful about where you throw these, because a lot of the times you will fuck over your teammates. If you're walking out here, don't throw a slow U-Haul if you think your team is going to push through U-Haul. And be aware of the spread, because a lot of the times it will spread to areas that affect your teammates negatively. Uh, I notice a lot of the times when I'm playing Phoenix, my Sage will literally just throw a slow exactly where I'm trying to push. And that shit is annoying. 
So be aware of where your teammates are trying to go. Maybe ask them what they're planning on pushing before throwing your slows down. Note you only have two of them, so you should be making a conscious decision on where you throw them before you throw them. Don't just throw them because you feel like throwing them. Yes, you should be using them every round, but you don't have to use them. Like, don't feel obligated to actually use them. So don't throw them willy-nilly in a spot that could affect your teammates poorly. Yes, it is good to slow off U-Haul a lot of the times, because a lot of the times if you're ABCing or you're just full-out taking sight control, it's good to have U-Haul slowed off there. So all you have to do really is just take note of where your teammates are planning on pushing and take note of where your teammates currently are. Take note of where exactly the slow could spread to and be careful about the spread that spread is huge the spread on these is tremendously large i don't know why the fuck it's so big but you have to be careful about where you're throwing them because it will affect your teammates negatively and it will get your teammates killed a lot of the times and it will lose you rounds if you use them the wrong way so i would say a good usage of these would to be walking out here if you have this like smoked off you can throw it deep into u-haul because that's going to spread to the doorway so it'll still spread all the way through here and it'll make it much harder for them to push and your teammate can get positional advantage right up here and then a phoenix can flash in or something do what the fuck he wants to do and you're not affecting your teammates and having it spread all the way out to here so be very careful of the spread of it uh more useful slow orbs will be back of sight now given it's not going to do much, but it, it makes it so they can't play around these boxes nearly as well. They have to kind of shift walk through them and take fights that way, as opposed to, you know, just swinging out and then rotating back. They're going to have a much harder time maneuvering around the box for at least like three or four seconds. You can slow off heaven. It's not as useful, but it's still very useful. Or you can slow off back of sight and then they can not peek you whatsoever from this area. I mean, they can. But they're going to peek you really slow, and that makes it super easy for you to get a headshot. Just know that a very good mechanic with these slow orbs is the fact it slows them down to the point where they can't take a wide swing on you. And that means a lot. If they can't wide swing you, they have to slow peek you. So if you're watching the angle, it is very easy for you to land the kill because they are going to be peeking you slow as fuck. All you have to do is hold your crosshair here and shoot them in the fucking dome. It's very important that you be aware of your slows because a lot of players love to push through them i do this all the time i will push through slows and people won't be expecting it so be aware of your slows and be aware that of the fact that it doesn't negate areas they can still push through them they will still push through them you have to be very careful about this you have to be very careful about the way you approach these slow orbs now more things you can do if you're retaking a site from ct you can slow off bathrooms causing them to basically be shut off so they can't actually fucking swing out here they have to stand in the middle of the doorway so it gives you a little bit of extra time to come out here and clear sight or you can slow off u-haul and that basically makes it almost impossible for them to walk through it and then peek you so that gives you a little bit more time a lot of the slowing is just buying time for your team to either rotate or buying time for you to push out even further onto the site gave, giving you the advantage on a retake that you so desperately need so basically your slow is a tool to delay and it's a tool to slow and mind game so you can actually get a free pick out of it potentially if they decide to peek through it it, uh, it basically makes it so they can't effectively swing and you can use it for info if they start running through it you will know if you think they're playing at an angle you could slow it off and if they if you start hearing the fucking crunchy crunch of the slow you know there is a player having fun in your ice just fucking around so these slows are insanely good and they're insanely cheap so you should be buying them and it's very good if you learn how to actually properly use these and uh, there are lineups you can learn for these i'm not going to show off any lineups because this video is already going to be like 15 to 20 minutes long and i know you guys don't want to sit through even more bullshit so one more thing I wanted to say, and I harp on this so goddamn much in my videos, is you don't want to waste your slows. You don't want to just waste them at the start of the round. If the round starts, you instantly slow that. It can be good, but really, in reality, you're kind of just wasting it. Because all they have to do is wait like three seconds. What have you done? What, what exactly have you accomplished by slowing that? You've shut down maybe a rush? Maybe? At most, you've shut down a rush that they can easily just recuperate, regroup, and then rush in even further. The only way I see throwing them at the very start would be so a brimstone can ult them if you know they're there. Or you can throw the slow and then recon in with Sova just so they can't actually leave and hide from the Sova dart. Those are really the only main uses for it. And if you are going to use it like that, you want to throw it even deeper. So they get caught even further back and your Silva can get a lineup into deep spawn and try and spot them out. 
but a lot of the times you want to hold on to your slows here you don't want to throw them at the start of the round because if there's nobody there it's fucking pointless you wasted a slow for no reason so just be careful when you use these slows, because they can be impactful later on in the round. And that goes with all utility. You don't want to waste your utility. You don't want to let them bait it out of you extremely easily, because that makes you predictable. If they know they can easily get your two slows out by instantly just showing one person here, then that's not good, because they're just going to do that every single round. They're going to just go short every round, and they're like, this fucking dumbass sage just throws his slows every time we show one person, so let's keep doing that. And you're going to keep throwing your slows like a fucking peanut brain, and you're just going to be wasting your slows. So just be careful about that. That's all I'm really saying. You can use them at the start of the rounds. There are situations in which it is smart, but you don't want to do it over and over to the point where you become predictable. So... Keep note of when you are throwing your slows. Just be consciously aware of how many times you were using them at the start of the round and how predictable you were actually being with your slow orbs. That's all I want to say about these. We have talked about these fucking shitty orbs for way too long. Let's move on. Alright, so I'm kind of pissed right now because this video is already 15 minutes long and I still haven't talked about two of her abilities. So we're going to speed the fuck through these. Basically, all I want to say with her with your heal is it heals over time generally heals to full and not only that but you can generally save your teammates if you notice one of them is burning in a molotov throw this shit on them instantly because it can generally save their lives it's very useful in that regard and not only that but you need to be very careful you need to be paying attention to your teammates health you don't want your teammates to actually ask you to heal them because it's very annoying when a sage is holding on to their heal because that's one of the main parts of her kits you want to actually pay attention to your teammates' health, and you want to be proactive in searching out and helping your teammates heal. You don't want to be the first one going in. You don't want to be entry fragging a sage because you have the heal. You need to stay alive for your team. You have the res. You need to stay alive for your team. It's simple as that. Uh, you can use this on yourself. Uh, if your teammates are like, you know, missing 10 HP and you're missing like 40, just go ahead and use that shit on yourself. You can be selfish sometimes with this heal. Just know it is very useful for your teammates as well. I don't have much else to say about the heal, but I do have stuff to say about the res i notice a lot of the times people will hold the res waiting for the absolute perfect moment to use it and this is incorrect you don't want to do that i get that it's a seven charge ult so you're scared you'll never get it again and you won't have it in the round you need it but a lot of the times you can use it to gain just the upper hand in a round that you may desperately need if you were if it is a three to three round it's generally pretty damn good to use your res and you know if if it didn't if it doesn't make an impact then oh well no big deal i mean your res is out that sucks but it's it helps you secure the round and tip the round in your favor so it's very good as a balancing tool and a lot of the times people will res you know if you get first picked people will res you know just to balance it back out to a five versus five situation it's also very good if you get a pick it's insanely good if you're playing attacking and you get a pick and it's traded so one of your teammates is dead you can easily easily res them and that gives you a massive advantage. So one more thing with this. So a couple more things with this res is when you res somebody, please, for the love of God, protect them. If you res somebody right here, it's very dangerous. They can get swung on from U-Haul. So the second you res, you want to have your gun out waiting for somebody to swing them. You don't want to res and watch your teammate instantly die in front of you. That will tilt them. That tilts me. I understand sometimes, you know, you can't really help it. Sometimes that shit just happens. But... If there's any way, just, you know, slow this off, get the res down, pick them up, right? You want to make sure that your teammate is protected when you res them. You have to be very, very vigilant when you use your res. You don't want it to be in vain in that regard. Now, another way you can use a res if you're in like a one versus one situation and you don't know where the enemy is at and say your teammate's dead right here and you think he's U-Haul, you could easily res him and just bait the fuck out of your teammate when he starts getting shot. You swing and kill him. You can literally bait your teammates with the res, and it's a lot of the times it's very impactful, and your teammates won't be mad if you do it. So you can use your teammates as bait with the res, and that's fine. But you can also use your team. But all I really want to say with the res is don't hold on to it waiting for the absolute perfect moment. Your res is very important to be your res is very important. And yes, I know it's very tempting to, you know, hold on to it just in case it comes down to like a three versus two and you want that perfect 3v3 situation but a lot of the times it can just be used to stabilize rounds and that's all you really need out of the res so don't hold on to this shit for fucking 17 goddamn rounds please for the love of god don't do this 
use your res it's meant to be used it's in the game for a reason you don't want to never use this shit also you can press the ability key and you can switch to your weapon and you still have your res in case you didn't know that so you know it's kind of fun to just wave your arms around a little bit in a you know, cute little fashion if you want to have some fun so all i want to say is there are three things you can do with the res you can bait with it you can stabilize rounds with it and also you want to make sure you are protecting the player you res if you don't intend on baiting them uh, you can also wall it off that's also a very good way to do things just know you're using your wall but a lot of the times it's very smart to do that so that, that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. I wanted to just cover some of the things that a lot of players don't really look at necessarily when they're playing Sage. And a lot of the mistakes that I notice at the higher ranks, uh, specifically like Diamond, Immortal, that a lot of players seem to overlook with Sage. Uh, now, I went in depth as I possibly could with this amount of time. If I went super in depth, this video would be like fucking 40 minutes long, and I know nobody wants to see that. So I tried to condense it down into an easy, digestible format for you guys, so y'all could ingest this information and fucking breathe Sage, and you will learn how to play Sage like that, just because of me. You're fucking welcome. Goodbye.